Hi, I'm Haley with My House Education Center. In this video, we're going to discuss how to plan a unit's worth of lessons for oral language and listening comprehension. Oral language and listening comprehension was designed to build students' oral language. Oral language is listening and speaking, and a strong oral language foundation is the foundation for reading comprehension and written expression. So it's so important to build strong foundation of oral language in students. The manual we'll be using for oral language and listening comprehension lessons is your purple manual. It's called the Colors and Shapes of Language. And for the purpose of this video, and in order to go through planning a week's worth of lessons, we're going to refer to page 50 in your manual, yellow like the sun, which is unit 16, weather. So I invite you to open up your manual and follow along with me. Now this is just one of the units. Each unit does vary a little bit from um, different activities, but this will give you a little bit of a basic overview on how to go through, think about each activity, think about what you might need to prepare ahead of time, and think about roughly how many days of instruction each activity might take. Remember, we're hoping that you can spend at least five to eight minutes daily on building oral language in your students. This might happen during your accurate and automatic reading routine during the read aloud section, or you might be incorporating this to another part of your instructional day. There is no specific lesson plan for oral language and listening comprehension lessons. If you're doing this during your accurate and automatic reading lesson plan, I would just invite you during the for the read aloud part at the bottom of those lesson plans to just write in day by day what you'll be doing for oral language and listening comprehension. If you're doing this during another part of the day, you might want to make an outline of what you're doing. So that's what I've done for unit 16. And the sample is posted with this video, but I have oral language sample unit plan for lesson 16. This is just kind of an outline of what's in the manual and it will help you think through how many days of instruction you might need for each activity. So I have activity one is naming, then we have describing, and I write down what pictures I'll need. Listening to a passage, I wrote down the title of the passage. We're doing a card pyramid, how many cards will I need per student? We're doing summarizing the passage, then we're writing, and editing. And this just kind of gives me a step by step of what's happening. It's exactly the same as what's in the manual. So you might want to organize your lesson planning like this, or you might incorporate it into another lesson plan you have for the day. So let's go through step by step in our manual, thinking about um, what each activity is about, if it's only going to take one day of instruction or more days, and if you'll need to prepare anything ahead of time. Remember, um, there will be videos on each of these components that go more in depth that you can reference if you have questions about specifically what to do during that part of the lesson. You can also always refer to your oral language and listening comprehension training materials for all of this information as well. So here we are, six, unit 16, which is weather, yellow like the sun. Our first activity is naming. What we know about naming is this is controlled pandemonium. The students are calling out answers to the questions that you've provided that are here in bold. Um, sometimes the manual might give you some suggested answers. This one doesn't give you any suggested answers. So ahead of time, I might go in and jot down a few of my thinking, um, my naming answers, just to kind of give me a direction to go that if students get a little bit stuck, where can I lead them? But I would say you have A through I here. We're going from broad to narrow. This would probably just take one day of your five to eight minute instructional lesson. Our next activity, activity two, is describing. Again, I would anticipate this would probably just take one day. It gives you a loose script to go through the describing hierarchy for two different objects. We have the sun and we have a raindrop and we have the loose describing hierarchy script here. You might want to show that instructional chart of the describing hierarchy for students while you're going through the describing section. Right above where it says activity two, it tells you what pictures or real objects you will need. So that's really handy. Remember, a lot of these pictures are can be found on the Pinterest website for Nye House, or you can always just Google your own or draw your own or bring in a real object. So we have activity one and two, probably just one day each. Now we're moving on to activity three. This is listening to a passage. The passage for unit 16 is called Clouds. This is a expository passage. Um, just a quick note about that. in narrative passages that are included in our manual, you'll have spaces where you see you read aloud the story and then in brackets, it will tell you the teacher draws and then it has a picture. That's for narrative passages. And remember those pictures can be found on the Nye House website because this is an expository passage. We're not including that element here, but just know that if it is a narrative passage, that is something you will need to do. So activity three, you're reading aloud this passage, and that's really all that it has for that. Um, I don't anticipate that taking an entire five to eight minutes. Some of the units include comprehension questions that go with that passage. This one does not, but it's certainly up to you as the instructional leader in your classroom if you think it would be beneficial for your students to 
do a little questioning after reading aloud this passage to students, that would be great. Activity four, when I turn the page to page 52, is when we get into our higher level thinking skills. Here in activity four, we are building a card pyramid. Card pyramids are how we like to lead students in summarizing expository passages in this uh, curriculum. So here we have a card pyramid. It takes you through steps A through J. So it's going to take you through step by step exactly how to help your students build their card pyramid. Each student will need a set of cards. You're going to think ahead of time how many cards they will need. And it really just depends on the passage, what the passage lends itself to. You'll need one for the main idea, one each for the supporting ideas, and then one each for all of your details. This one I would think nine would be an appropriate number. Sometimes students might organize their main idea, supporting ideas, and details a little bit differently. So keep that in mind that not everyone's card pyramid might look the exact same as long as it is um, it works with what the passage is presenting, I say you let students go for it. I went ahead and just as a teacher, I would suggest you doing the same thing. And I underlined where we're talking about the main idea. Some of, it lists you some of the main ideas here and the details and numbering the cards just to help me when I was guiding students through this activity, just so I know what's what. Otherwise, if you're looking at A through J, it's just a lot of words. So that kind of helps me look at it. Um, the first few times you take students through a card pyramid, obviously you're going to have to go a lot slower. You're going to have to take them step by step by step very slowly. As students get used to this process and have more experience building card pyramids, you can probably gradually release that to them a little bit and maybe chunk those instructions together or just give a little bit of guidance and they can take that learning into their own hands. Remember that students do not have a copy of this passage in front of them. So it will probably be important for you as the teacher to reread the text several times so students can hold that information in their working memory. I do not anticipate that you can get through an entire card pyramid in one five to eight minute instructional chunk of time. I would think this would take several days, especially at the beginning when you're just getting used to this in the first few lessons. So I would anticipate maybe two to three days would probably be adequate to get through a card pyramid, but it really depends on the abilities of your students how much um, ownership you give them of the learning, or are you really still at that point early in instruction where you're doing step-by-step -step with them? So it just depends on your class and your situation. The next activity we have, activity five, is summarizing the passage. Students will use their card pyramids from activity four. They've stacked them in order, where we have directions here on I about that. They've stacked them, and now they are orally summarizing. What's really important about this is they're taking phrases that they wrote in their card pyramid and turning them into sentences, into an, a summary paragraph orally here in activity five. So you're probably going to need to model for students how to turn phrases into sentences, how to incorporate transitions, and they're doing this with a partner here. So this might take one or two days depending on how experienced students are with using their card pyramids to give oral summaries. Activity six is writing. So we're now taking our card pyramid to our oral summary to a written summary. And in the written summary, again, each student is going to use their own card pyramid and they're going to take those phrases that they wrote on their card pyramid and turn it into writing complete sentences. The beauty is activity five, they already rehearsed this orally. So they've practiced it orally and now they're taking it to writing. Again, I cannot imagine that this would take just one day of five to eight minutes, but Depending on the experience of your students, two to three days, maybe a little bit longer um, for writing their paragraph. And again, you as the teacher, you will probably have to model this very extensively at the beginning. And then slowly, as students become more used to this process through the units, you can gradually release that to them. The last activity, activity seven, is editing. One of the things we ask you to edit for with your students is length. We like to give the suggestion that a summary passage should be roughly one third the number of words as the total passage. So the total passage clouds has um, 196 words. It's written right here for you in your manual. So we would suggest that a summary would be about 66 words. That's one thing you can have students edit for. You can also have them edit for anything that you've taught them and you hold them accountable for you in your classroom. So for example, capital letters, punctuation, spelling, that sort of thing. At the end of all this, students will have a piece of writing that summarizes the passage that they've heard. You can have them publish this, present it to the class, all of those fun things that get students excited about their writing.
Now remember, this was an expository passage. Clouds was expository. So we used our card pyramid to summarize the passage. If it's a narrative story in your unit, instead of a card pyramid, you'll be using the five W question cards, who, what, when, where, why, to help structure your summary. But just like with the expository text, it's the manual will take you through step by step. It's okay to teach with your manual in hand. That's why it's there. Always we want you to read it ahead of time and know what's coming so that you can give explicit directions to your students, but it's always okay to refer to it while you're teaching. A big takeaway for oral language lessons is that oral language is all about students doing the talking, students doing the listening. So we want students to be engaged during this whole process. Remember the students, if they're the ones doing the talking, they're the ones doing the learning. So it's okay to have them asking questions, calling out answers, and engaged with what they're doing. If you have questions about specific components of your oral language and listening comprehension lessons, review to the other videos that will go deep dives into each of those components. You can always refer to your training materials for OLLC or your Colors and Shapes manual.